Hey guys, it's Tuesday morning here at the shop. I pulled a late night last night working on the blog and the website specifically so that I could take today and work on the Model A and shoot more video for episodes of Disassembled. And this morning I'm here working on the fuel cell of the truck. Uh, and this morning's dispute is how important are aesthetics versus performance? That probably sounds like a question with a really obvious answer to a lot of people and I don't blame you for whatever side of the fence you're on. I found myself before saying, why would you sacrifice performance specifically for the way something looks? But on the other hand, what good is going fast if you don't look good doing it? Today's debate is how to mount the fuel cell in a way that I'm happy with the way that it looks while also not disrupting the truck's center of gravity too much. The center of gravity is going to play a really important part in the way that the truck rides and handles and drives and all in all is an important part of the way the truck is going to be as a whole. Uh, I want to make sure that I enjoy driving it and want it to perform well. Is it ever going to be on a track? It's a, it's a Model A with a big V8 in the front and a stick axle in the back. Let's be honest. But with that said, I don't want to build something that could be better than it is when it's done. So right now I'm trying to decide exactly how to take this fuel cell, decide where to mount it, whether it's flush, lifted, or what have you, and I want to build something the best that I can while only spending the amount of time that I want to spend on it. So those are the two big factors for today and we'll see where I get. All right, so here's a quick example of exactly what I'm thinking of and maybe I can provide a little bit of an example of what I think might look aesthetically a little bit better. So check this out. So now I have the fuel cell sitting on top of a couple of jack stands still more or less right where it's going to go but lifted up a little bit from where it was. Now I can't necessarily explain my reasoning but I think that this looks a lot better and if I had some type of interesting looking mount that runs between the fuel cell and the frame rail, it'll create a lot more aesthetically cohesive looking piece instead of, oh, I got lazy and simply set it on top of the frame rails. Will it raise the center of gravity a bit? Yes, but I think the end result is worth it for a better looking finished product. So what I want to do now is figure out exactly what kind of shape I need in order to bridge the gap that I've created with aluminum. I'm thinking some rib nuts into the frame and then using the existing bolts on top of the fuel cell to bolt this mount together will be a good looking answer. And I have a few pieces of bent aluminum here already that I was using for, I think floor pieces is what it might have been. If you check these out, I made these just kind of as templates and what have you. And I'm thinking I want a shape loosely similar to this. Uh, it won't be quite like this because I'm going to need slightly different angles. And what I also need to do right now is figure out exactly what this dimension between the two bends needs to be. Um, while this is probably pretty simple stuff, if you remember everything from like 8th or ninth grade math, I don't, but thankfully Google does. So I'm going to go straight to Google, find a triangle calculator, and figure out exactly what I need. So here's what I got at the moment. Uh, if anybody remembers triangles, you only need three particular dimensions or angles uh, of your six total in order to find out the rest of the dimensions. In my case, I know that I, want, I have a frame rail that's two inches wide. You'll have to forgive my terrible artwork here. I am not an artist. My frame rail is two inches wide and I want the flange of my fuel cell to be two and a half inches off of the top of the frame rail. So that gives me two dimensions and I know that this dimension here, this angle here would be 90 degrees. So doing a little bit of quick math and I can find out exactly what the hypotenuse is. And what that will give me is the exact dimension that I need between the bends on my aluminum. So I did the math and it turns out that the answer is 3.202 inches. 
Now, I don't have an easy way to measure that out, nor do I want to spend the time to do it. I don't necessarily care if the fuel cell is exactly two and a half inches off the top of the frame rail, and I'm fine with moving it up a very tiny amount. So instead of 3.202, what I'll do instead is measure it out to three and a quarter, 3.25. It'll move the fuel cell up a very tiny amount, but that doesn't matter in any regard. And it'll make this way easier to build. Now because I want this piece to bolt to the top of the fuel cell, I need to copy the holes from it and transcribe them onto this. And then presumably copy the same thing to the other side to mount to the frame. I might add a couple more holes just for support and stability, but either way, it needs to have the same bolt pattern as the fuel cell in order to attach to it. So I'm gonna draw that up, measure first, draw it up, cut it, and hope that it works. I've got kind of a rough outline piece of what I'm working on here, and you can kind of see it here against the fuel cell. I've got the three holes on the top drilled so that it can actually mount to it, and then on this plane down here is what will actually affix to the frame rail itself. Now, it's worth noting, this isn't what's gonna actually support the fuel cell. This is um, partially aesthetic, it's partially stability. I mean, it, it will do a lot to position it and hold it in place, but there will, it's not going to support the weight of the fuel cell. Uh, I will add a couple of heavy duty straps over the top of it and it will get tubing underneath it for the actual support. But this is the important part for deciding exactly where it's going to go, getting it positioned, and making it look good. Alright, so I've got the fuel cell back in place, and I've got my aluminum panels roughed into where I think they're going to go, and I'm pretty happy with the way that it's shaping up. I'm going to flip the camera around here in a second and show you guys kind of what it is that I'm envisioning, or at least how it's shaping up and the foundations of it. And hopefully with a little bit of stylizing, this will really start to take shape and take form. So keep in mind, the fuel cell is just sitting on the jack stands at the moment, so it's sitting a little bit crooked, sitting a little bit off kilter. But you can at least get an idea of what's going on here and kind of the dynamic that lifting it up and adding these angled pieces has added. It, to me, it creates a more finished look as opposed to just having it flush mounted. Now, I could be alone in that, but fortunately it's my truck, so I don't have to worry about what anybody else thinks. And from here, what I'm going to do is come up with a way to stylize uh, or kind of add some ornate intricacies to those panels so that they really start looking the part. All right, so Miller just showed up and he's going to finally man a second camera, the A7, and hopefully we'll actually get some higher quality video of stuff happening and then I don't have to like stop constantly and talk to myself and Miller can get high quality shots of what's going on and I have to rely less on the time lapse and the GoPro and the cell phone and all in all. So act two, here we go. All right, so I've got my plates made for my fuel cell and they're drilled and ready to be bolted on once I have holes on the frame, but I wanna do something to make them look a little bit better. Uh, the thing that I'm set on at the moment is taking another strip of aluminum and riveting it to the face of it. Now, is that extra weight? Yeah, it probably is. It's not a lot though, and I think the end result can be something rather pretty. So I'm gonna mark this one up, drill it for a whole bunch of rivets, and then go on and attach it and see where we wind up. And these are eighth inch rivets. I'm gonna set them one inch apart, 
and then as mentioned earlier, I'm going to inset them from the edge of the metal 3 eighths of an inch. And there's no real reason for that other than I think it looks good. And it seems that ATL seems to think so too because they inset their bolts on their fuel cell the same amount. So I'm in good company at least. So the fuel cell is at least loosely mounted now. It's no longer just sitting on top of the frame. My side pieces worked out exactly the way that I hoped that they would. They're bolted into the frame. They're supporting the cell. They locate it right where I want it. And truth be told, I'm pretty happy with how they turned out aesthetically. This, this riveted aluminum, I think is gonna play really well in with a lot of the other parts that will wind up on the truck as well. Especially the interior, because the current plan is to do the whole floorboard dash, trans tunnel, everything like that in this same style, all, all aluminum. The next project at hand is to actually build the supporting structure for the fuel cell. I haven't fully decided how I want to accomplish that yet though, but at the moment I think I'm going to build some type of tube or cage structure that will extend down from the frame and pass underneath it. So now there's another brainstorming session to figure out exactly what I want to do. So I'm going to grab some paper and a pencil, or I guess in this case a sharpie draw some stuff up, and then start bending some metal. All right, so I think my current plan for the mount underneath this thing is to build out of this three quarter inch square tubing, which is what I'm actually also building the whole floor of the cab out of as well, uh, is something that's kind of this shape here. And while it's all just loosely laid together here, that's the gist of what's gonna be on each side. So suspended under each frame rail. And then a pair of, of bars will cross underneath the tank and support it. The only downside at the moment is after taking a look at the TIG welder thinking, I'll give that a spin, I realized that the machine leaks and my tank that I filled up last week is totally empty. So lesson learned there, but now I've got to booger it all together with the name. So we'll see how it goes. We're back from kind of a long dinner. Clearly it's night outside now, but we're gonna keep going for tonight. I'd really love to finish this fuel cell project, get it mounted, finished up tonight, call that part of it done. It's probably gonna get be a week before I get to work on this thing again, because I gotta leave town again this weekend to photograph another race. So, about to do some welding on the lower supports, get everything kind of fitted up, tacked into place, see how it goes. Should be, should be pretty good, should be able to wrap this up. Alright guys, it's an absolutely full day, been going all day, but finally just finished up the last few bits of the fuel cell mount. 
Uh, I still have some aesthetic trimmings to do, uh, some aluminum to add, really kind of polish it all out. But fuel cell is mounted, it's supported, it's ready to hold fuel, uh, and that's as much as I could ask for today. I'll show you guys the final product, and then I'm going to call it a night.